How does the problem of polysemanticity enter the picture here? Polysemanticity is this phenomenon we observe where we look at many neurons and the neuron doesn't just sort of represent one, one concept. It's not, it's not a clean feature. It responds to a bunch of unrelated things. And um, superposition is, you can think of as, as being a hypothesis that explains the observation of polysemanticity. Um, so polysemanticity is this observed phenomenon, and superposition is, is a hypothesis that um, would explain it along with, with some other so things. So that makes McInturb more difficult. Right. So if, you, if you're trying to understand things in terms of individual neurons, and you have polysemantic neurons, you're in an awful lot of trouble, right? I mean, the easiest answer is like, okay, well, you know, you're looking at the neurons, you're trying to understand them. This one responds for a lot of things. It doesn't have a nice meaning. Okay, we're, you know, that's, that's, that's bad. Um, another thing you could ask is, you know, ultimately we want to understand the weights. And if you have two polysemantic neurons and, you know, each one responds to three things and then, you know, the other neuron responds to three things and you have a weight between them, you know, what does that mean? Does it mean that like all three, you know, like there's these nine, you know, nine interactions going on? It's a very weird thing. But th there's also a deeper reason which is related to the fact that neural networks operate on really high dimensional spaces. So I, I said that our goal was, you know, to understand neural networks and understand the mechanisms. And one thing you might say is like, well, why not? It's just a mathematical function. Why not just look at it, right? Like, um, you know, one of the earliest projects I did studied these, these neural networks that mapped two dimensional spaces to two dimensional spaces. And you can sort of interpret them as, in this beautiful way as like bending manifolds. Mm -hmm. um, why can't we do that? Well, you know, as you have a higher dimensional space, um, the volume of that space in some sense is, is exponential in the number of inputs you have. And so you can't just go and visualize it. So we somehow need to break that apart. We need to somehow break that exponential space into a bunch of things that we, you know, some non-exponential number of things that we can reason about independently. And, and the independence is crucial because it's the independence that allows you to not have to think about, you know, all the exponential combinations of things. And things being monosemantic, things only having one meaning, things having a meaning, that is isn't is the key thing that allows you to think about them independently. And so I think that's, that's if you want the deepest reason why we want to have um, interpretable monosemantic features, I think that's really the, the deep reason. And so the goal here, as your recent work has been aiming at, is how do we extract the monosemantic features from a neural net that has polysemantic features and all this this mess. Yes, we have, have we observe these polysemantic neurons and we hypothesize that's what's going what's going on a superposition. And if superposition is what's going on, there there's actually a, a sort of well established technique that is sort of the principled thing to do, which is dictionary learning. And um, it turns out if you do dictionary learning, in particular if you do the sort of a nice efficient way that in some in some sense sort of nicely regularizes it as well as well called a sparse autoencoder. If you train a sparse autoencoder these beautiful interpolable features start to just fall out where there weren't any beforehand. And so that's, that's not a thing that you would necessarily predict, right? But it turns out that that works very, very well. You know, that, to me, that seems like, you know, some non-trivial validation of linear representations and superposition. So with dictionary learning, you're not looking for particular kind of categories. You don't know what they are. You, exactly. They just yeah. emerge. And this gets back to our earlier point, right? When we're not making assumptions, gradient descent is smarter than us. So we're not making assumptions about what's there. Um, I mean, one certainly could do that, right? One could assume that there's a PHP feature and go and search for it. But we're not doing that. We're saying we don't know what's going to be there. Instead, we're just going to go and let um, the sparse autoencoder discover the things that are there.